Jeg vil starte med her lige at byde velkommen til Daniels øh, lille webinar her fra Fab Lab Ruk, øh, i lockdown-perioden om, hvordan man laver elektroniske komponenter i Fusion 360. Og jeg tænker, at øh, måden vi gør det her på, det er, at øh, Daniel han kører bare af. Det kommer cirka til at køre i en halv times tid, så vidt han, han estimerer. Og hvis I har nogen spørgsmål, så må I gerne stille dem i chatten, sådan så han dybest set bare får lov til at køre, og så prøver vi at adressere dem, eller jeg prøver lige at bryde ind og, og forklare, eller sige til Daniel, der er noget, han skal forklare igen. Men ellers så tager vi spørgsmålene til sidst, efter han ligesom har gennemgået forløbet. Er det fint med alle? Ja. Glimrende. Jamen, Daniel, så tror jeg bare, at du skal køre dig ud af. Tak for det, Jacques. Jamen, jeg vil bare lige starte med at sige her, så at vi kommer til at starte ud med at lave en, en ret simpel komponent. Jeg har tænkt mig at starte med en 555-timer, fordi det er sådan en surface mount-komponent, som... Der godt kan være lidt særlige, måske at skulle bruge af de ting, man gerne vil have på sine printboards. Men øh, ellers så har jeg bare startet med at åbne Fusion her og lavet et design. Jeg har lavet en mappe, og jeg vil højst øh, anbefale folk at sørge for at holde de her ting inde i deres egen mapper, da komponentbiblioteker og elektronik komponenter kræver rigtig mange filer øh, at åbne i modsætning til, til almindelige Fusion. Filer. Så derfor har jeg sørget for at, øh, at lave en helt ny mappe til mine ting her. Og, øh, og eventuelt vil jeg måske senere også underopdele det i mapper. Men normalt så, øh, så starter jeg mit design med at lede efter en komponent. Men i dagens tilfælde her, så vil jeg lige starte med faktisk at lave komponenten til at starte med. For at vise det, for ikke at gøre det for kompliceret. Men her under New Document, der er der en, der hedder New Electronic Library. Og hvis jeg klikker på den, så... Øh, så får jeg åbnet min, øh, min library manager her. Og så får jeg ellers et tomt library. Det kan jeg så starte med at gemme. Så jeg har kaldt, tænkt mig at kalde øh, timers. Fordi jeg godt kan have flere komponenter i samme library. Men jeg indikerer også ved navnet heroppe, hvad jeg kommer til at skulle, hvad navn jeg skal lede efter senere. Så der kan, derfor vælger jeg nogle gange at give det en lidt større overskrift. Det kan være kondensator, modstand, timer, kristaller. Alt sådan noget, jeg, vil, jeg normalt selv vil inddele det i, hvis det var mig. Så består et uh, electronic design ellers af fire forskellige dele, symboliseret ved de, tre, eller de fire knapper, der sidder heroppe. Hvoraf at jeg måske vil starte med at forklare omkring, uh, hvor jeg vil starte med at forklare omkring symbolet og efterfølgende footprintet, og så have et, øh, en package. Og så det sidste, der er over, det er device, som er den bindende faktor for de tre. Det er jo sådan med mange elektriske komponenter, at de måske har samme øh, symbol, men de kan godt have forskellige footprints, så en 555-timer kan både komme i en pakke, hvor det er, den er through-hole components, hvor det er, pindene går ned igennem bordet, men det kan også komme i SND-pakker, og, øh, og derfor vælger de at, at opdele det på den her måde, med at man kan lave forskellige footprints. Så hvis jeg lige en gang tager og, øh, og deler jeg over i min, øh, min browser her, så har jeg fundet en Texas Instrument 555-timer, og så har jeg fundet helt nede i bunden af diagrammet hernede en mechanical data for, hvordan sådan en pakke rent fysisk ser ud. Det er footprintet, vi så kigger på, og den 3D-pakke, som der er, og ellers er helt oppe i toppen af dokumentet, der kan jeg finde noget mere omkring, hvordan jeg kan se symbolet måske bør være, og hvordan pin-konfigurationen er sat. Jeg har ikke tænkt mig at eftertegne den her fuldstændig, øh, men jeg har tænkt mig at holde konfigurationen med, at jeg skal bruge de her pins også. Så det første, jeg vil gøre her, det er, at jeg lige går tilbage i Fusion, så vil jeg oprette et symbol og det kan vi kalde for 555-timer. Øh, og så bliver jeg ellers åbnet op ind i det her. Heroppe der er nogle af de vigtigste ting, jeg skal måske bide fast i. Det er, at jeg har den her pin, øh, som symboliserer hver af de pinde, som jeg skal bruge på. 
Og så har jeg nogle forskellige linjer, naming og, øh, og tekst ting til at, at arbejde med. En af de ting, som der er super vigtigt i, i Fusions version af Electronic Designet her, det er, at der er altså mulighed for, at øh, eller der er ligesom et grid, som ting snapper til, så man kan ligesom godt se, at, øh, at den har forskellige snaps til forskellige punkter. Og det er ret vigtigt, at, øh, at det grid ikke bliver lavet om. Den giver også en, en warning, hvis jeg vil vælge at søge på grid-funktionen. Så, øh, så står der også her, it's strongly recommended to use the default grid in schematics. Og I vil opleve, hvis I laver om på griddet, at det ikke, at over i jeres schematic design senere vil få problemer med at forbinde til pindene. Så derfor der skal man helst holde det her. Så jeg vil oprette mig nogle pinde. Når jeg klikker på pinden, så får jeg min lille åbningsmenu herovre. Og der har jeg mine rotate-funktioner. Jeg kan også rotate ved at højreklikke og gå igennem de, de forskellige rotates, jeg har. Så har jeg også nogle pin øh, muligheder. Jeg kan fx have en inverted symbol på pinden, eller jeg kan have et clock symbol på pinden. Og, øh, og det kan man også lige se, hvis man hopper over dem, hvad det er, det er for nogle forskellige ting. Så er der også en inverted clock. Ja. Men til udgangspunkt, så, øh, så bruger jeg bare en straight pin. Et enkelt spørgsmål, der bliver stillet, det er, om det er muligt at gøre det på engelsk, fordi vi har et par deltagere, som ikke er så gode til dansk. Ja, det er det meget svært, eller tænker du, at... Uh... No, no. It's, I, can, uh, I can probably do that. It's no way okay. to do it in English. I'll do my okay. best. But uh, I might lose some words at uh, some points, but uh, what I will do. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, rotating. It's uh, possible to rotate by right-clicking, and the functions of the pins are here. We also have the length of the different pins, so we can choose to have... Right now, you can see that there is a small circle, and the leg uh, the pin size has a specific length, and I can, I can change that to have none, very tiny, or very long. We can always come back to it later. So I will I'll place some pins. Uh, Before I actually do that, I will just go through the last one down here where I can choose to display both the name of the pin and the pin number or only the name or only the pin number or none. And then the last one here is direction. In here, I can choose different options for the electronic rule manager to figure out if I connected everything correctly. So it has some small logic to it where it, uh, it knows that power pins, this is power, has to be connected. So if there is a power pin, it will flag that as an error inside your design. For myself, I, I, I didn't really dig too much into these. I, there is either none connected, and then we have an input on output or a general purpose input output pin and power. And for the rest of them, um, I'm not really sure what what functionality it will give inside my my manager, but if in doubt, always just use a, a simple I/O pin, and uh, it will not flag any errors inside of your design, and everything is is able to to connect to it. So I'm just going to use that here for most of the pins, except for the power pins. I will I will change those to power pins. Then we also have something called the swap level. And that is for specific packages where pin configurations can be the same. So if people are familiar with, uh, for example, an AND gate, it doesn't matter if I connect to either the A or the B port of, of an AND or an OR gate or, or other parts like that. So then I would make sure that my swap level is different from one, but the pins would be the same swap level. So maybe I will just do a quick example of two pins here having a swap level of one, like that. And for a gate, I could do something like this pretty quick. So these pins are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which way I configure them, but it does have a difference when I do design my PCB boards. Sometimes it's easier to route to a specific pin than it is to route to the, to the other one. 
And by having swap levels, I can just change them on the go. So that's a pretty neat little thing. But if the swap level is zero, it will, uh, will not allow you to, to swap pins. So for my 555 timer, I need four pins on each side. So I will, I would like my, my package to look something like this. And under my line tools, I can choose different styles up here for how I want the bend to go. So I'm just going to choose 90 degrees like this and close it off. So that's the basic chip kind of configuration I want to have. But as I said, I want to have the correct pin names and I want to have the correct power pins. So here I have to go back and forth a little bit between the different, uh, the different uh, windows here. So I have a small piece of paper next to me just uh, so I can, I can quickly write it down. And I do, I do notice on uh, reset, sometimes they are inverted, but uh, it doesn't look that this pin is often, they will have a line on top of it to tell me that that's an, an, if that's an inverted pin. I have one question yeah. while you're writing is that how much of the internal logic of this component do you actually have to recreate inside of Fusion? Um, so I'm not going to do anything else than re uh, duplicate the names. And I'm actually also going to, to shorten uh, the naming configuration just because I think these names are too long. But I do have to make sure, for example, that I have pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I would like my my simple to have the same configuration. I can choose not to do that. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have all pin configurations in my simple on the same side. I don't have to use uh, a simple like this. For example, I, I'm pretty sure if I do 555 timer, simple, I will I'll get different symbols for it. I could choose to do something like this instead. But it differs how, how people prefer their, their schematics to look. And for simple components, I prefer them to look pretty much the same. Uh, for more advanced things like microcontrollers, I would probably do one side of IO pins and one side of power and um, other ports. So, yeah. And um, so I actually flipped it around here. I have pin one in the bottom. I want pin one to be up here. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For me right now, it would be quicker than to, to rename the pinning numbers. We're still to... seeing your browser. Oh, I will change. Thanks. Mm. So thanks. So yeah, I will. Uh, I just deleted what I had because my pinning, my pin numbers were wrong. I want pin one to be this one up here. So for this one, it would be quicker to to just uh, do it over and do it correctly the first time, like this. Like so. So I wanted this one is ground and this one over here is VCC. So I'm just going to change those. So I just did uh, a click and with shift, I can mark both of, both of them. And over here in my inspector, I have the ability to change some of the things that I decided when I actually placed the pins. And one of the things here is I can change the direction to power. So it's going to change it here for uh, PWR. And now I would like the names to be correct. So I can go 
up here, I think, and I can choose name, I think. I only remember the shortcut, so. So the shortcut is N for name. And if I click on a pin, a pop-up box will pop up with the naming convention in here. And I can then write ground. This one is the trigger, so I'm just going to write trick. This one is the output. And this is reset. BCC, this is discharge. I'm just probably just gonna do this. And this is the threshold. And I wrote this down. What is this? This was control voltage. There is, I guarantee you almost, if I went online, I could find way better naming conventions than that. But, uh, but that's what I'm gonna stick with for now. So yeah, in case you didn't notice, I, uh, I actually just moved it. And I did that because I can see the names here overlapping. And just by dragging over a box, I can see that I, I do get all these lines and I can, I can pull them by grabbing one of the points I can get it to do it. I don't know why it says it's it's loading. <laughs> yeah, of course it doesn't work when people are looking. Usually you should be able to drag them. I am able to drag them, but I couldn't do it for some reason. But there is also a move command, a shortcut for M, move. But, uh, and the difference from dragging and having the move command is when I do a move and I click on something, I don't hold down my mouse right, my mouse right now. I just, uh, it just keeps, keeps snapping to it actually. Never mind why that doesn't work, but uh, but here we go. So this was uh, this was the simple. And for a package like an eight and eight timer, it's a pretty it's a pretty simple IC. It's a sock sub IC eight. So if I go down to the mechanicals, I can find it here. And here is all the relevant information for con for making this simple. And in the new part of Fusion Electronics here, they actually built in a library kind of manager. And if I create a new package, it will also create the associated footprint because the 3D packages actually have a, have a library manager. So I'll just quickly do save. And if I click on create new package, I'll come into something more familiar of Fusion. But over here, you see that there is the package generator and inside the package generator, we have a lot of the different, most common ICs that we can choose from. And in here, I've, I should be able to find here uh, sub IC. And if I click on that, it'll just guide me through how I, should, how I should make these pins. So I can type in what I know for now. I know I have eight pins. And then I want the pad shapes to be rectangle. The density level is just nominal because down here I will have to, to type in either the lower or the higher tolerance of these numbers. So for smaller ICs, very tiny ICs, you should maybe take into account which, which way you want it around, but you can choose the most or the least or the nominal location. 
And then it's just a matter of inputting the different fields. I think I will change to sharing my desktop like this instead, so I can quickly go from, from one place to the other. So I can see E is the spacing from center to center on my pads. And most often inside of these packages here, the, the letters actually do match. Um, for this one, it doesn't say that E is this spacing. It just tells me here, I can see that the, the spacing is 0.65. So I'm just going to do 0.65. Capitalized E is the total width, including the legs. So that will be from 4.75. 4.75 to 5.5, 5 .5, 5 .5. L is the, the pad size here. So I, can, so I can look for that somewhere. Very, was it the, let's see if I can find that somewhere. That's odd. So, do I get the ability to calculate it? Mm. And forty-two point seven. Forty-two point seven. Let's say in this circle at the right. You no, uh, the, the a uh, little up. Oh, yes. there it says, yes. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Yes, thanks for that. 0.4 correctly and 0.7. The B is the width. We got that one up here. Perfect. And D is the total width of the package here. E1. Did I just do that correctly? E and D. D is this one. Perfect. A is the height of the height of it, maximum 1.1. And A1 is the spacing below the package. Must be that one, 0.25. So sill screen of the bodies. I'm going to choose that as maximum. That's how far the pad is going to, like the pad size is going to remove from the, from the different, uh, from the sill screen. So how big of an exposure the pad is actually going to have. And that is just going to be maximum. And you can get your fabrication tolerances from your supplier if you care. But uh, I, I find that these, Tolerances are kind of like standard and, uh, and pretty sufficient, especially for big packages like this. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Placement tolerance is probably, I'm not sure, but it's probably the size of the pads will be, be elongated from side to side by this amount just to allow pick and place machines to, to have some tolerance of, uh, of placing down the components. So if I do update preview, it is going to just take a minute to load. And it will build my package. Then I can determine if that looks, looks to be about right. I, 
I do feel like that it's a little too wide. I'm not, so I will just double check that my, my body E1 is, is the correct measurement. So 3.1 E, yeah, here, 3.1 and 2.9. And I probably also got, no, I'm doing it wrong. That's the total. Nope, it's right. And this one is supposed to be 4.75 to 5.5. And then I can just update the preview again and it will, hmm. I probably had it right. Sorry about that. E1, E1, yes, that. And totally yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if I now click finish, do you want to add this to your library? Yes, yes I do. And then it's going to create the actual 3D package and save it into the folder. This was the reason why I recommend having a folder because I just create a new saved file there. And if I let it load, I'll see you over here in my manager that I now have a 3D package. And if I go under footprints, I can see that I created a footprint with the exact same naming convention. And if I double click into this, this looks like a footprint. And it actually already pre-built this uh, sill screen, for it, marking pin one and having the name and value all set in here. So the last thing that I need to do is just to associate my symbol and my footprint together. And if I click on this little arrow here, I can actually already see that my 3D package and my footprint have been associated with each other. So if I go on to device, I can create a new device I'll call it 555 timer. For now, for this, I will have to add a part. You'll get my symbols. So I will put that in here. And uh, so here I actually see one thing that I will go back and change in my symbols. I do prefer the, this, the origin of the parts to be in the center of the body. Of my, of my symbols. So I can go back into my symbol here and move back to the same issue. Move. So I want the origin to be there because when I get into, I want to do this for one reason and I want to do it because when I do design schematics for my components, I have to grab them by the origin. And it's always easiest to find origin in the center for me. So I, that's just where I, I grab components when I build them for later. 
So I'm just going to save this, go back into my device. And you see that it actually already updated now and the origin is, is in the center. And the same thing goes that I have to have, I wanna have them both centered. I can in here, place them different locations. I can actually place multiple ones if I want to, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably come back to that later when I do another design. So like this, and then I can create a new pack. I can associate the, this footprint and the packages. So I am going to add a local package. And you can see here that it grabbed, it grabs the footprint, it loads it in here. And then I have to tell it how the pin configurations have been, have to be configured. So I do connect. And here I have the pins of the symbol and the pads of the footprint. So sometimes I'll go back into my, like I can show you an example for it. Like right here, it just did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if I wanted to, I can also make sure my footprint has a specific name. So if I do the shortcut N again and tap on this one, I can write that this, this is ground and PCC. So you get the point. And, uh, and now when I do associate my pins, it becomes a lot easier for me to do VCC and VCC and click connect. And that will then do a connection between those two pins. But I do still have next to me here, my little schematic of how the pins have been configured. So pin number two is the trigger. Why am I missing the trigger? Oh, I got it. So I just disconnected because I accidentally connected two legs together. I'm just going to connect those back together and saying pin number two is the trigger. And uh, pin three is output, okay, and then reset. Then comes, then comes the constant voltage, uh, the control voltage, discharge, nope, threshold then discharge. So now I have configured all the pins correctly. So if I do okay, it will assign the pin numbers to the outside. And I don't like, it's up to, like, I see them do different, people do differently. Some people like to not have the names inside of the components and only have the names on the pins. And that's why it does write VCC here. I do personally prefer to have both pin numbers and names on. So for this, I would change this back to, to having this as pin one and this as pin eight. So I can just go back into my footprint, rename it like that. How are we doing on time? 30 minutes. <laughs> Save. So the last thing I, I will do here is just to show you how to import this now into a design. So if I create a new electronic design, here and do new electronic design, it'll start by coming up with the manager for the electronic design. I can save that as NAR. Create a new schematic. Add 
part. It's just going to ask me to save that one more time. Kind of. Yeah. I didn't save it actually. I just because if I go back into the manager and hit save here, that will cascade through and make sure that the name is also the same as that one. I just I just prefer it prefer it that way. So add part, open library manager. Because if I search for it now, I, I wouldn't be able to find it. I have to go into available and then add from a team. And here I have the timers library. And I can select that. It's a bit of a tedious, pro, uh, tedious way to do it. But when you have added them once, it, uh, it's, it's a done deal. Then I can find it. And I usually check that the type is team and it has a version number different from one often because uh, all the other parts here are version one for most parts or either this library.io. But, uh, but for the timer, it's here and I can click use. And now it will appear in here for my manager. So if I search for 555 and if I do an asterisk afterwards, um, it's just going to put in a wild card and let me pick anything here. And I should be able to find my timers library. It's right there. There's an associated package and this package also has a 3D package associated with it. And then I can click OK and place it in here. So that's most of it. I will show you one last thing for how to update these. I can click, I can right click on them and click open device if I want to open up my up, open up the library. So that's a quick way if you if you figure it out during your design that you you wish to have something differently. Uh, for example, if I wish to have more spacing on this, I have to open simple like that. And I figured out that this is too tight. I want more space here. Then I can click save. And then when I go back into my schematic design, I have to update that this has been updated. So if I go on the library, I can press this button, update design from and all libraries in design. And you see there that it moved over. So that's just a, a quick little uh, uh, tip for you guys to how to update, update these components. I think now it is up for discussion what I should continue on doing. So I, I have maybe two projects in mind uh, and I'm also ready to take suggestions from you guys, but either how to do packages with multiple components in one. So for example, a package with multiple MOSFETs inside of one package and how to do that. Or I can do, uh, I have also been suggested to do this switching regulator just because this 3D package is not um, available for design like inside the, the design manager. So I will, uh, I'll let you guys just do a quick voting inside the chat if you have any opinions on what uh, on what kind of a uh, device I should make next next here or anything else. It's totally up to you guys. I think uh, making the switching regulation could be fine. Cool. Any other suggestions? Okay. So, uh, regulator it is, I would say, then, unless Shock has something to say. 
Jeg tror, det er... Nej, well, I think that's fine. It, it's actually good to see how you connect something that is you know, not generated, but where you do the 3D part yourself. Yep. Okay, cool. So, so when I when I go looking for components, I find, of course, this thing, and I will look for the data sheet to find figure out how to connect it and what the configuration should be. Same thing. I'm going to to go look for either a symbol. So I will probably use the same symbol as this one. I'll write DC DC in the middle. It has one, two, two, three. And here is the mechanical design. So that's the things that I just check for to figure out how to do. So let's just jump right in. I'll close down these parts and I will, I will create this as a new library just of, of good practice. I could do it in the same library if I wanted to. Some people prefer having just their own library. Like for me, it would be Daniel's library. Um, but it makes it a, a little different. So like so, simple. So just going to do that. like so, and I probably want all of these to be power pins. Like that, and then my line tool. So quick little uh, tip here is if, if you right click when doing lines, it will it'll do, it'll change how like which path it takes. So this is not really centered. So I'm just going to see if I can get this to move. I don't know why this is such a big issue right now. <laughs> and I prefer it well, to be. At like least that. to me, it seems like this whole electronics design thing is is added into fusion it doesn't use any of the same kind of shortcuts and design ideology as the rest of fusion i would say it's different uh, but i also do really like that they incorporated a lot of the shortcut understandings to me for example that name is the shortcut is n that's not very common from eagle most common uh, practice in that world is to type in commands and do do it that way instead and i get to the same functionality but uh, some of the things are are a little different so the in ground and the out so one thing i actually didn't show you guys before was i didn't attach a uh, name and value to this, but I am going to show you for this part, how to do that. The quickest way to add those is just to go, I'll do that as low, a little bit more slow, automate and run URL, UPL, and then I can do name. And then there is this feature right here that says set name and value. And that is going to locate the name and value on the correct layers that they should be. And they're going to have the correct naming convention as they should be. So I can place those. For this one is an example of where I want it not to be on my grid. Actually, I, I don't like that it's on the line. So one thing that I do for not snapping to the grid is that you can do uh, for Mac users, it's the alt key. I assume it might be the same thing for, for Windows. But here I can move in smaller increments. And I can do that for the text because I'm not going to try to snap to it, but make sure that your pins are located in the grid. The same, so for drawings outside, it's also fine. You can do that uh, as, a, as a thing, just to, to make your things look a little bit more neat. 
And I also think that I am just going to, if I can, I don't think it's a name different. Nope, I can't. So I'm just going to leave it like this. This is going to be my component for now. And then I should create the footprint. I prefer doing footprint first when I am working this way around and I'm not able to use my, my package manager. So I have three paths. Uh, I will, I would often like to see um, how the footprint should look and not exactly the mechanics of them sometimes. So it tells me here that the hole I should drill should be one millimeter, uh, but the legs actually are only half a millimeter wide. Some, some data sheet will also give you how big the, the actual soldering should be on the outside. So create new footprint, and we're going to call this, often I prefer calling this the, the serial number that I can find on them. So I'm just going to choose this one. And let's take a look here again to find the package like that. So up here, I have to create the paths. So I have SMD paths and through hole paths. And for this one, I'm going to use, of course, the through hole. So I can choose the different shapes I want them to be. And I also notice here that I just remember that uh, my, my system right here is in, in inches and working in mils. I'm just going to change that by going back up into the grid settings and change this to millimeters instead. And I'll come back and change, change the grid layout when I, when I figure out how the spacing for the pins that I'm going to place is going to be. So by doing that, I also see that my whole size has changed to a more even number. And this data sheet told me to do one, and this is the outside ring. I'm just going to leave it as auto as, uh, as it didn't matter. And I think for this, I will place, I'll start in the center. And now I will go over and look for the spacing between them. So I can see that it's 8.05 for, for the spacing, uh, being that it actually works in every 100 mils. So for this one, it's pretty easy to find the specific place location, uh, the location that I want it to be in because I can do 2.54. No, is that correct? Yeah, that's 100 mils. So then if I have that, my it will only snap to those the specific locations. So it'll be pretty quick to do it like this. Sometimes you're not that lucky to have them on a straight line and uh, on such an such a such a grid that I can just play lay it out like this, and I'll just uh, tell you then that sometimes I do intentionally place my my pads different from origin just because it's way easier to work with them in in terms of coordinates because this will be coordinate zero zero, and the only way I can really move parts in very specific uh, dimensions is, uh, is doing some math and, uh, and adjusting the position up here. So, uh, so that's, my, that's my best way to, to alter how the dimensions should be related to each other. I don't yet have the functionality in Fusion to just do in, like incremental uh, dimensioning where I would just type origin, origin to this part, origin to that part, and do relationships between them. It is, some math is involved in this and, uh, and it, it's tricky sometimes to do it. And, uh, and then when I'm done laying everything out, I can just mark everything up and move the, everything as a group if my move would work a bit better. <laughs>
usually I can work, I can move them as a group like that. And a pro tip, if you just mark them and you get them actually to move and you drag it over, I can't get it to do it. <laughs> I do not understand why this is happening to me like this. So right now I'm holding and dragging. And if I go over on the inspector and release, it will let me, so right now I don't have anything uh, released and that allows me to pan and zoom again so I can actually move my parts. So as for the data sheet, it says that it's a little bit out of alignment in this direction, I can see for the footprint. So I'm just going to move them down there for, for the time being. Let's see how this would be easiest to construct. I think, I think I'll do it differently. I'll move them up here and, and then I can create eleven point six divided by two. So that gives me five point eight. I'm just going to choose 5.8 here and then do a line 1 in that direction and 1 in that direction that should do it and I'm just going to make one up here as well and then I'm going to figure out how how far apart those should be that should be this number 755 so if I highlight that part, I get the ability up here to change my line uh, from point and to point. So I can, I can change this to be up to positive 7.55. And for the other end, 11.55. It's a bit tedious, but uh, it works. Same thing goes for this one. If I want to have it there, I can choose my five. I could also lower my resolution a bit to maybe like one millimeter and then just move only that corner and it still overshoots a little bit. So I can hold Alt and, and the Alt key doesn't allow me to do that because so this is the alt key spacing that you're going to get. So now by holding alt, I can more get those to, to actually align even smaller resolution to actually make them like that. One thing I didn't take care of here is the spacing from this line up to to here and that's 2.15 highlight those 2.15 oh. and now again i can take this and i should be able to move everything down so i get the origin in the center again i prefer it that way So there we go. Again, I want to have name and value on this. So I'm just going to use the same methods as before. Okay, so that was the footprint. Save. And now I want to create the package from this. And it's quite easy when you get the footprint because you can just right click here, and you can create a new footprint or you can attach a copy of an existing footprint that you already have. Um, if you already had a package, you can attach it by this, but I want to create a new one. So you see it imports actually all the lines and everything. So the only thing I really have to take care of is the legs downwards and the, the body of the component upwards. 
And in here, I can just change into solid, do a sketch, I'm not really go into, going to go into how to do 3D modeling, but, uh, but the quick, quick story is I project things, I click extrude, I tab everything I want to extrude, and I figure out the height, 10.16, 10.16. And sketch wise, I will create a new one and I have to make legs and they are square uh, with their rectangles. So I can do center rectangle after I projected the centers. and half and 0.3. Like so. Maybe if you want to learn something here, it's uh, it's that it's possible to do change this to spacing and do in here in direct uh, the distance that you can do a measure and you can click on two points for measuring how far apart they should be. So from here. to here. That will give me the correct spacing. And then I can just do symmetrically instead of spacing. Okay. Height of those, 4.1, negative. I do see that it has like this, the small little lip here and I'm just not going to worry about it and say that will be good enough for my package. Then I go back into 3D package, and I click finish, and it will say, do I want to add it to your library? Yes, yes, I do. And as before, we should see down here, now that there is a 3D package associated, making a device, three point, so you can to call it 3.3 regulator. Get the regulator symbol, place it in here. And get the footprint there. Connect pin one to the end, pin two to ground, pin three to pin out. Oh, cool. Save, and that's that's it. That's how you create a custom component. <laughs> All right, let's just take a, I'll just uh, show you that it actually does. I'll, I'll place it inside the design we just did before. crashed, <laughs> working a bit too fast here. I found over the last like half a year when, when they actually launched using electronics, uh, they have become way better at not crashing for me when, uh, 
back when it actually released, I had crashes a few times a day. And now I, re I, I get maybe a crash once a week. But I find that Fusion has a, does still a tremendous job of recovering unsaved files. Um, but, but it is still an issue and I, I hope to see them fix this problem soon. So yeah, same story, open, add a component, open library manager, available, add from team, regulators, find the regulator there and click use. And if I go R, funny enough that I already have a regulator, huh? <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, here it is. Do okay, and then I can place those two in here. If I switch here into the PCB design, you'll see in the footprints of these two packages we have developed are over here. And lastly, if I switch into 3D design, they will, uh, will show me the 3D packages. There they are. Okay, so I would say that now I'm open for questions. Otherwise, that's also a little bit over one hour. So I think we cut. We can... Are there any questions at all to all of this? I mean, I, I could probably come up with a couple of my own. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, any questions at all? Well, I guess that's a no. Okay. Mess says thank you. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys aren't too frightened from the design here. But you just got a little bit of a, an understanding of how it works. Yep, I think uh, as I can see in the chat right now, a lot of people are very happy with what you showed. And I think uh, for me personally, there was some, some eye openers and some stuff I didn't know you could do. So uh, I think maybe my own little project will be soon, will be sooner rather than later finished uh, because of this. So I really wanted to do my own PCP just you know, to try it out and have some experience with it. So um, yeah. thank you, Daniel. That was very, very nice. Thank you guys for listening and uh, have a good day. <laughs>